Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today we are going to be taking a look at the NVIDIA RTX 3050 graphics card, which is launching at a retail MSRP of $249.99. Although everyone knows you're not going to really be able to find them for that. They're probably going to be scalped day one, regardless of, you know, performance, reviews, anything really. Um, they're pretty much going to be gone and you'll be sorting through eBay looking at listings just like we saw recently with the absolute dumpster fire that was the RX 6500 XT. Now we're taking a look at the EVGA XC model here as there is no Founders Edition card for the RTX 3050, but this card was uh, procured through NVIDIA and EVGA working together uh, to get these cards into the hands of reviewers. So that's how I was able to get an early review sample that I've spent the last week Benchmarking for you guys at 1080p and 1440p in a variety of titles. So we'll be getting into the benchmarks, discussing pricing, at obviously at 250 MSRP and what you might be able to expect on the aftermarket is that's how most people are going to have to get these cards, even though I do not endorse uh, purchasing cards from scalpers in any way whatsoever. It has sadly become a reality. So we'll at least take a look at what the market is trending at right now for similar sort of cards, you know, what you might look to uh be spending if you want to get one on the aftermarket, which you should obviously not support. But first, today's video is brought to you by PrimeTechMart.com, where you can save money on software like Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $25. They've also got Windows 10 Home for under $20, and now Windows 11 Pro you can grab over on PrimeTechMart.com. They've also got Office 2019 and the new Office 2021. And if you want to save an additional 20% at checkout on Windows 10 or any other software, go ahead and click buy it now. And during the checkout process, go ahead and put JP20 in and apply that coupon and that'll give you 20% off of any software that you happen to pick up over there. So for Windows 10 Pro, you can see it dropped our price down from $24.46 to under $20. So be sure to hit up the links down in the description below and don't forget to use my coupon code JP20 at checkout for an additional 20% off. So taking a look at the EVGA RTX 3050, as you can see, this is a fairly small form factor card dual fan heat sink with a single eight pin power connector on the side of the card. Not too, not too dissimilar from the RTX 3060 model that I took a look at a while ago, which was also an EVGA. Uh, model aftermarket card. On the back, we have no backplate for this RTX 3050 variant, but you might find others out there that have backplates, might require more power, uh, things along those lines. But this particular aftermarket card is retailing at $249.99, which is, you know, the base MSRP, basically. Any other cards that are maybe better, quote unquote, than this, or, you know, have improved features, higher clock speeds, backplates, things of those like, uh, you'll probably be ending, ending up paying uh, upwards of 249 for those cards, but that's pretty much the base starting point uh, for RTX 3050 cards is $250 US. And for that, you'll be getting 2,560 CUDA cores along with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, which, you know, on paper you might think, oh, well, that's got 2,560 CUDA cores. The uh, RTX 2060, for example, has 1920. You would think that this is going to be at least as fast or faster than an RTX 2060, but since NVIDIA sort of redefined uh, what CUDA core was with the 30 series of cards, that ends up not being the case. And I did test the 2060 here uh, for comparing with the 3050 along with the 3060, as well as the 3060 Ti, so you can kind of see where this fits uh, within that lineup of cards. So before we get into the benchmarks, I just want to let you know about the test system, then we'll go over all of the numbers, and then we'll talk about some eBay and aftermarket pricing and stuff towards the end of the video. Check the uh, chapters and timestamps below or in the uh, timeline of the video if you have the, feel the need to jump around. I benchmarked this card at stock settings at 1080p and 1440p, so there was no overclocking or tweaking done to the card uh, in any way. Just tested it straight out of the box to see what kind of performance we were getting on this particular EVGA RTX 3050 model. I was benchmarking on my benchmark rig with the i7-8700K, so a fairly modest 6-core 12 thread processor, which should accurately represent what a lot of mid to low end systems might be running out there. Maybe something similar with maybe say a Ryzen 2600-3600, but with the Intel side on a 6-core 12 thread, a few years older, 
obviously, you know, if someone's looking to purchase a lower end card, uh, like a 3050, maybe upgrading from something like a 1050 Ti, a fairly modest rig that someone like that might be running, or they might even be running something possibly lower end than that, and we're really not going to be getting bottleneck there anyway with the 8700K. I was also running 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at 3200 megahertz, and all of the games were tested off of an NVMe SSD drive. All games were tested at ultra settings, and there were a, a couple of titles that I did test with ray tracing because I was curious to see what the performance would be like uh, with that, and that will all be noted in the benchmarks, which we'll go ahead and jump into now, starting off with 1080p, again, ultra preset. This is your average FPS with the four cards that I have here, the 3050, 2060, 3060, and 3060 Ti. I would have liked to include a 1050 Ti uh, in this, but I did not have one on hand for testing. Uh, and that is a four gigabyte card. This is an eight gigabyte card. So that's also conceivably one thing they have up on the competition of the 6500 XT, which la launched with uh, only four gigabytes of video memory. And you can see here the 3050 slots in, in performance wise, just behind the RTX 2060. But obviously people coming from 2060 pr won't be really looking to upgrade to a 3050, that should be pretty self-explanatory. But for people that are maybe on older cards like a GTX 960 or maybe a 1050 Ti, I do think this will probably end up being a decent upgrade path if you're able to get one at the right price of around $250, which seems fair. Although I would have liked to see it maybe around $199 uh, or so, and then maybe $250 for like some higher end after aftermarket models. But at 1080p Ultra, you could see on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, it managed to pull in 53 average FPS, which is not too bad at all for that title. And then 58 average on the 2060, we got 68 on the 3060, and 77 on the 3060 Ti, and it pretty much scales like that um, for most titles. And obviously, Ultra settings, you would probably want to go ahead and dial some of those back. Something like AC Valhalla, you can dial in the, the volumetric fog setting, and you should be getting over 60 frames with this card just by dropping that one setting and keeping everything else uh, up at Ultra. And in a lot of other more demanding titles, Borderlands 3, again, that's below 60. Dirt 5 with DXR managed to pull in an average of 55 frames, which even beat out the RTX 2060. And that was the, the lone benchmark where... Uh, that was the case, and I was thinking maybe that might be due down to the RT cores, even though it has fewer than the 2060 at 20 versus the 30 of the RTX 2060. They are second-gen RT cores, which are said to have twice the throughput of the first generation of RT cores. So that could be a benefit right there um, if you are looking to use ray tracing, even though these cards really should be very sparingly used with ray tracing and only uh, um, when paired up with something like DLSS which was not available in uh, Dirt 5 uh, for testing. Division 2, though, on DirectX 12, managed to pull in a respectable average of 72 frames per second, and even Horizon Zero Dawn, which is quite taxing, got an average of over 66 frames per second. Watch Dogs Legion presented really a worst-case scenario here using ray tracing, completely maxed out, only managed to get an average of 23 FPS, on a title like that, you would almost assuredly have to use DLSS on like a performance setting or even ultra performance or just, you know, go without the DXR altogether. But for, you know, a lot of other titles out there like Rainbow Six Siege, competitive esports titles, I still think this would be a very good card uh, if you were looking to use it for something like that, Apex Legends, Fortnite. And if you're coming from a 1050 Ti, it could still be a decent upgrade for you. Um if that's the way you're looking to go. I'll go ahead and throw up the 1% lows now here for the cards tested. Again, the 3050, 2060, 3060, and the 3060 Ti. I also did go ahead and test the card at 1440p, although honestly, unless you're using something like DLSS or you're running a much older title, 1440p is not really going to be the primary target for the RTX 3050, but I did want to go ahead and include those as it will definitely put it into a more GPU-bound scenario so you can see uh, where the card lands against the other GPUs here that I did happen to test. And as you can see, uh, it's below 60 average FPS in all the titles that I tested at Ultra, but that's not to say you couldn't tweak some options, maybe play it medium, and then pair that up with something like DLSS and get over 60 frames per second in titles that are supporting deep learning super sampling. And I'll go ahead and throw up the 1% lows now here. If you want to go see those numbers at 1440p, they'll be on your screen right now. Feel free to pause and go through those at your leisure. So all in all, like I said, this card is slotting in at a little bit slower 
than an RTX 2060, a previous gen card, but it's not meant to be an upgrade to that card. So that should uh, definitely be noted. It's not really what I'm trying to say here is that it's slower than a card that it should be replacing. I was hoping that it maybe would be just as fast as a 2060, and in some titles it was as fast as a 2060, or only just a couple of frames behind, but I wouldn't say that the 3050 is basically a 2060, which, you know, some people might like to say, or, you know, we've seen in some generations going from one to the next, like a lower number tiered card uh, is basically the next tier up, but in the new generation type of thing. Uh, that was not really the case here across the board with the RTX 3050. This is still slower than a 2060, but that's not to say it's not an improvement over something like a 1050 Ti if you're coming from that. Now, as far as the aftermarket is concerned with the pricing, again, this card's gonna be listing for 250, but if we take a look at what's going on right now for sold cards in the US over on eBay, we can see that RTX 2060 cards are selling on average from about $400 to $500, and in some cases, even over $500. So you can expect this to come in somewhere behind that, probably somewhere in the $400 to $450 range. And I'm basing that based on where the 2060 is, and once the performance numbers come out, it should be a little bit lower than that, but probably a little bit more than the RX 6500 XTs. It's got more VRAM, and based on, I don't have, like I said, I don't have a 6500 XT, uh, but Comparing, you know, the numbers on that card, this should come in a little bit ahead of that. So it's probably going to be somewhere between 2060 and 6500 XT pricing in terms of the aftermarket where you can see the 6500 XTs are pricing around $350, somewhere around $300 or even just below that. Uh, but, you know, on launch day, I was seeing them up over $400. Uh, thankfully, they have come down. Uh, a bit. You can see here most recent ones selling for 350, 375, 340, 365. Some cards even for 300 or 280 dollars for brand new cards. Um, and then the tw the 2060s that we're seeing here, at least the ones that I've sorted through, are all used cards. So you know once these come out and they're going to be new, they'll probably come in somewhere between that. I would say on the high end for the aftermarket, we'll probably be looking at 400 to 450 dollars. But you might luck out and find them free for low, even lower than that. But again, I'm not covering the aftermarket pricing to endorse purchasing cards from scalpers. Far from it. I just want to put that information out there so that people are aware of the realistic pricing scenario that the 3050 will find itself in pretty much day one after these cards sell out on websites like Newegg and Amazon or in a micro center, your brick and mortar stores. It's going to be very difficult to find these cards, no doubt. No doubt about it. This We've been dealing with this for a couple of years now. It's really nothing new. So that's where we could expect this card to actually land. Um, but that's why I'm, I'm reviewing it based on performance, not necessarily on the price, because the price they put on it really doesn't mean anything. The aftermarket is going to determine the price point of this card um, once scalpers and stuff pick them up and launch, sell them over on eBay or OfferUp or Craigslist or anything of the like. But please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below on the RTX 3050 and the uh, performance of the card and, you know, that it is it better than better or worse than you expected. Please let me your thoughts, opinions and everything down below as I love reading through those. I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and I'll catch you guys next time. Tara.